welcome to today's show. Today we are finally going to be reviewing that stunning Grand Seiko, that uh, iconic luxury watch from Japan. Uh, that is just something totally new to the channel, long overdue I do realize. Massive thank you to my good friend Ifrahim uh, who has so graciously lent it in for review, a valued member of our community and Patreon member. So a million thank yous to you my friend. And of course I should do customary wristwatch check. I am indeed wearing the little citizen, the Marina Militare. Well actually this is not the precise Marina Militare version because uh, the only difference is the lack of printing on the dial but essentially it's the same watch. And I've got it on the new, the V2, the Urban Gentry NATO strap that is just released. I'll leave a link in the description, you can buy this from Wrist Candy Watch Club just come out and uh, I've got to say I'm loving it. I almost prefer it to the to the uh, the original. Um, quite summery, you know, and, and I think it works with a with a black dial diver like this. So anyway, okay, so wristwatch check done. Now you're probably wondering what on earth the Kurosawa film scenes at, at the intro have got to do with the Grand Seiko. Uh, obviously they're both Japanese, but it's a lot deeper than that. Kurosawa for me personifies that quest for precision and perfection uh, that is so inherent in Japanese art and culture and uh, nobody in my opinion has come close to cinematic perfection like Kurosawa, especially his films. And you'll see not only is that obsession with uh, perfection in his work but also recurring themes that are so classic in Japanese art and culture of uh, of nature, you know, things like you would have seen shots of rain, snow, um, large movements of people, you know, again, nature, fire, rain, wind, and of course, snow. So that kind of ties into to uh, the Grand Seiko, especially today's version. So uh, I just thought it was very, very fitting. I'm a huge Kurosawa fan, uh, but also you, you can see so many similarities, and it's so indicative of that Japanese obsession with perfection, uh, which not only his films uh, personify, but also this watch that we're reviewing today. So let's switch perspectives and have a closer look at this Grand Seiko. Today I am finally getting to review a Grand Seiko. This is the Grand Seiko Spring Drive. Uh, reference number is SGBA011, and it's better known as the Snowflake. Uh, with good reason because of that gorgeous, gorgeous dial uh, which we'll discuss in just a moment. Now it is not running, I deliberately uh, wanted to uh, power it down because I want to show you uh, the power reserve and just how amazing it is when you wind this little beauty up. So hugely important, obviously it's uh, significant for its technical achievement, renowned for its accuracy, uh, but beyond that it's actually an extremely well-made, uh, luxurious piece made to the highest standards uh, and just features some of the most uh, just incredible um, technical achievements certainly uh, in, in the last 50 years probably. Hugely important horologically uh, and also I mean guys just look at it, it's absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Um, so I know you guys have been waiting a long long time for this. So let's get the boring stuff out of the way, dimensions and all the rest of it and then we'll, then we'll talk about its movement and we'll talk about its uh, gorgeous aesthetics. Now you'll notice I have actually brought the scales in and this was a very good suggestion by a viewer. I'm going to start including it a little bit more. Uh, forgive the <laughs> rather crude appearance of these scales, these are actually for cooking. I use this for cooking, so uh, but but it will serve its purpose here anyway. Right, and I must point out the calipers are indeed covered with sellotape, so it's not going to damage the watch whatsoever. We've got a diameter of about 40 millimeters, just over 40. Thickness of about 12 and a half. Uh, lug to lug, we're looking at 48 and lug width we're looking at 20 millimeters so really perfect for a contemporary dress watch obviously a little bit different to the mid-century size a little bit more modern a little bit bigger but size wise this is probably uh, the sweet spot for a lot of people dimensions is absolutely spot on uh, I, I personally prefer something a little bit smaller but that's because I have smaller wrists but as you'll see in the wrist shot later 
it wears unbelievably well. So first of all, you'll probably notice that the color is a little bit darker and that's because of its, uh, this is a solid titanium alloy. And uh, the other thing you'll immediately notice is just how light this thing is. It's unbelievably light. At first I was a little bit kind of <laughs> perturbed at uh, just how light it was because we tend to associate weight with quality. Uh, if something feels a lot more solid and heavier, we, we tend to feel that the impression is that it's uh, more solid, more robust, uh, higher quality. But the concept of the snowflake, uh, which is the main feature of the dial, is also echoed in this uh, weight. It's They wanted to make it as light as a snowflake, so to speak. So, uh, And I'm quoting Seiko there. Now, uh, the snowflake obviously refers to that beautiful textured dial. Uh, and this was inspired by Snowfall at the uh, Shin. Now, please do not uh, <laughs> have a go at me for my Japanese pronunciation, but this Shinzuka Shi workshop. Uh, uh, and they were inspired by the Snowfall. If we go really close up, you can see that it has that beautiful snow texture. I mean, just it just looks like you, you, you want to... You want to make a snowman and um, roll around in it, really. It's absolutely gorgeous. Somebody also remarked it's a little bit like, it looks like uh, papyrus, you know, paper, which, yeah, I can kind of see that too, but it's gorgeous. So, entirely made in Japan, as we see signed in the bottom, and this is made, uh, obviously, by master watchmakers. Now, the snow theme is actually not only in weight, but in dial, but it, if you know Japanese art, and I collect a few pieces back in the UK. Um, nature pl always plays a huge part in um, Japanese art. It's very much in that classical Japanese tradition, uh, which I really, really like, and, and it just makes it uh, even more endearing. Breaking up the dial, we have the little power reserve, which is a really nice complication to have. Now, the cutout there, if you can see that, there's a beautiful engraving that represents at the moment, it's completely, it doesn't have any power stored in there where the needle is right now. So you see it's on zero. As you fill it up and store more energy in it, uh, it gets thicker. I, I think it's very, very subtle, but beautifully done. So I'm just going to move the hands. It has got a screw down crown, which is really nice. Boosts the water resistance rating to about 100 meters. And which is fantastic because when we discuss the movement you'll see that it's extremely robust so we'll just move the hands out of the way so we can see that beautiful applied logo it is of course hackable and you can hand wind so I'm just going to pop it in those beautiful dolphin hands uh, i remarked that they were like sword hands and i didn't mean that in the sense of the style of hands but i meant that if you see the way the light catches on those beveled edges it, they look razor sharp in fact, it's already going just on that little bit of movement. So we're going to wind it up. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it's like this really high pitched. It's not like any other movement I've ever experienced. And as we wind it, you'll see the little power reserve topping up, filling up there. Absolutely, almost per wind. It's gorgeous. The, the, the winding action reminds me now this is a little bit bizarre, but it does remind me of Formula One cars. If you've ever been to a Formula One race, they have this high pitch. It's not a, like a vroom, like a, a normal car. They're really high pitch, and that's obviously got to do with their high-powered, high-performance engines. The movement here is a little bit similar, uh, and we'll get into that in just a moment. So there we go. It's uh, topping up, and as you see, that beautiful, smooth sweep that is just so indicative of the spring drive. Beautiful applied markers there, with gorgeous beveled edges. And if we if we angle it, you'll see that they're quite tall. They really have a nice three-dimensional aspect. No expense has been spared on the dial. Everything is applied from the, the Seiko script at the top all the way to that GS logo. We do have print there. And I love the fact that Spring Drive is in blue. It's hardly noticeable, but it is in blue, and it matches the blued second hand, which I think is gorgeous. As we've discussed uh, in a previous video, to to have a blued hand, it's 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 a higher refinement because you know you have to heat the steel to a very specific level. 
and it's something that you've seen uh, uh, more kind of high-end watches so amazing amazing quality in the uh, dial it's just gorgeous got very simple minute track running around the outside and uh, I, I, I think it's a perfect dial. I, at first, I, I wasn't sure about the little power reserve there, but I think it's offset very nicely with the date window that is just done beautifully at the three o'clock position. So really nice balance. The power reserve indication really is a kind of traditional touch that on a watch that is extremely modern um, and just very tastefully done. Let's just have a look at the, uh, the, the polishing of the case. Now, this is a friend of mine's and I've, a watch and it has been worn quite a bit it, titanium being a little bit softer tends to kind of scratch up a little more the brushing is absolutely immaculate intermediate links we have a high polish and then flanked by these beautiful brushed segments and it's, it's almost actually I would say it's kind of is it matted I mean it's done so well <laughs> it's, it looks blast you know sandblasted almost but it is brushed absolutely gorgeous smooth bezel flat sapphire crystal just sits flush there absolutely gorgeous that screw down crown is is of course signed with the gs logo beautiful deep engraving very nice crown no crown guards obviously but uh, it, it does kind of sit in the case quite nicely big beveled high polished edges and just contrasts so nicely with the matted sections the finishing is phenomenal we haven't even got to the main event yet but we'll get there we'll get there <laughs> i think we'll save that for last uh, the clasp of course is a double button deployment very nicely done solid you know everything you'd expect uh, the bracelet however hasn't got screwed links now this is because it's made out of titanium and titanium being quite soft if they had screws the it would actually strip the um, the titanium in the links so they had to use pins which is a bit unfortunate but it's not because they're cutting corners it's simply because it's not practical to have screwed uh, you, you won't see screwed links on on titanium pieces because it they just strip too uh, too easily a little bit of a shame uh, personally i'm not a fan of titanium but that's just me as you see on the on the bracelet those very subtle beveled edges just capture the light so well lovely signed gs again on the back so we'll just do a quick wrist shot of course this being a dress watch there is no loom so we don't need to do loom shot but we will do a wrist shot and this is gotta say it's so comfortable because it's light and i think it actually kind of makes sense for a dress watch you, you hardly notice it's you've got it on probably the only drawback is if you knock it into things it's obviously not going to be as solid as stainless steel but for a dress watch i love the concept it's very light it's not that tall lovely curvature on the uh, lugs just hugs the wrist this is as maximum really as i would go and i think the size is absolutely perfect Personally, I would have liked it a bit smaller, but that's just me. For most people, it's absolutely perfect. Really, really comfortable. I mean, I couldn't have designed a more comfortable watch. And I think the titanium really adds to that. So, let's discuss the movement. And we turn it over, and we've got a beautiful display back. Sapphire crystal again. Lovely little kind of cog style frame there to the, to the sapphire. Screw down case back, obviously. And we'll see all the information, all the resistance, all the rest of it signed around the outside. Made in Japan. Now, this movement is the 9R65 spring drive movement. And as you can see, it does have a rotor. It is automatic. It is obviously mechanical, but it's a hybrid. It has an actual quartz oscillator in there. And it's, it's not totally mechanical and it's not totally quartz. It's a kind of hybrid. Uh, but I will attempt to explain the spring drive technology. And this is really the most cutting edge technology that Seiko have to offer in terms of, you know, mechanical based watches. 30 joule movement, if I just turn it around, it's beautifully finished. We have that Cote de Genève finishing off on there. If we really look, try and get inside there, um, you'll see that wheel in constant motion. And this particular movement is amazing we got a we got a deviation of about one plus or minus one second per day which is just absolutely outstanding I, 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 you know probably one of the most accurate if not the most accurate mass-produced movement 
out there. I, I struggle to think anything. I don't. Well, not to my knowledge that is is you know available. Of course, we have that extremely smooth sweep. So spring drive essentially is to simplify it. It is a big spring. So as the rotor rotates it stores up energy in a big spring so as the main spring unwinds it provides the power that drives the hands a special regulator called the tri synchro regulator controls the movements of the hands a small fraction of the main spring's power this is enough to drive a quartz oscillator and an IC. The precisely accurate reference signal from the quartz oscillator is co then coordinated with the speed that the main spring unwinds. A delicately controlled electromagnetic break is then applied to ensure that the main spring unwinds at the same rate as the quartz oscillator. And because of that uh, electromagnetic break, the hands keep virtually perfect time the entire mechanism uses smoothly controlled rotary movements with no conventional escapement so this not only makes the uh, movement give a very precise time but also a continuous and smooth kind of organic sweep to that second hand this technology also allows for an incredible 72 hour power reserve which is you know like a three day power reserve which is just phenomenal and because they've replaced the traditional escapement it makes it extremely resistant to shock uh, which is you know one of the contributing factors to its accuracy and also it makes it immune to any kind of positional variation very very impressive a uh, little bit of technology here instead of that traditional movement we see in the back of a lot of watches it's just continuously spinning quite calming to watch so and again you know they've signed it blue there in keeping with the, the little very subtle blue theme there in summary we have a very tastefully done uh, watch that is absolutely bang up to date technologically we've got to remember that seiko back in 1969 with their first quartz really revolutionized the industry this time the the, the leap is slightly on a higher level it's on a high end you know you were not going to see this replace uh, entry level mechanical pieces whatsoever because of just the high level of craftsmanship uh, that it takes to make these things well hence the the higher price obviously the spring drive technology has actually been in development since the 80s um, and the first prototype was shown i think at basel world in 1998 and it's only really since the 2000s that it's been available to buy commercially it just shows you everything that is just uh, so phenomenal about japanese watchmaking it personifies everything uh, about that Japanese quest for accuracy. I mean, Seiko have been obsessed with accuracy ever since, uh, you know, their, their first uh, mechanical timepieces back in 1913. It's that very typical Japanese quest for excellence, um, that obsession with perfection, so beautifully represented in this watch. Every detail has been very carefully thought out. Nothing has been spared. Personally, I think I'd prefer to even wear it on a strap. I mean, just imagine how light it is. And talking about weight, let's just quickly get a, uh, a measurement. So if we pop it on the scales here, 92 grams. I mean, that really is <laughs> quite amazing. If we just compare it to a ball there, bull diver we just reviewed that's 166 you know and as they say as light as a snowflake so what a stunning piece i mean i don't think that it's gonna have the same effect as the quartz did obviously because of the the high level of of craftsmanship and expertise it takes to to make these things uh, the price is totally justified as a luxury timepiece it's phenomenal it's probably something more geared towards uh, the real horologist it's certainly something that's very very fine um, obviously important because of its uh, technical achievement it, it is like owning a little bit of history i mean kind of sounds a bit cheesy to say that but it really is something special anyway guys that's been my review of the seiko snowflake here grand seiko snowflake absolutely gorgeous 
Uh, I just love the way it plays with the light. I could stare at this all day. One thing I, I, I really do respect about this is you could argue this is the total package because you've got that robustness. You know, you could even go swimming with this. It can take the knocks because of that movement. It, it kind of takes the role of a sports watch, but it's elegant, it's extremely dressy. Uh, certainly gives the um, Rolex date just a run for its money. Whether you like it more or less, you know, that's just preference. As a technical achievement, you just, <laughs> you've just got to marvel at it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, let's take it back to the studio. Okay, welcome back guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, certainly a different experience on this channel. But I've got to say, there is one thing and probably the only downfall, uh, the only kind of negative I can find with this piece because honestly it is <laughs> as close to perfection uh, as they come. I, I, I really mean that and that is a real big statement. But it is missing something that I do love. Uh, about traditional mechanical and automatic pieces and that is the ticking sound. There is no ticking in a spring drive movement. It's deadly silent. It makes me think of a little bit like Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, you know, uh, the, the, the difference between a replicant and a human. Uh, that they've become so perfect, the, 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 these robots that, <laughs> that essentially they, they may be superior to humans but they lack that kind of the imperfections that make it lovable. Uh, and, and the same can be said about the spring drive. It is uh, it's so superior to, to everything else mechanical uh, that's out there. But it lacks that soul, that little ticking beat that I find so endearing and special. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's like Federico was saying in the, in the video uh, the other day, uh, and also I've said long, long time before in that, that special biomechanical relationship, that little heart that is sitting on your wrist beating away. It is something special. Not only is it a, a reminder, a kind of memento mori of our own existence and the passing of time and, and all the rest of it, but it is something special to have that little thing on your wrist that is that you feel that is alive. You know, you have a, a different relationship. I felt a kind of coldness from the spring drive, even though that sweep is very organic, even more so organic than a, than than uh, most mechanical pieces, but it's a difficult thing to understand. I can't deny it is a marvel of, of engineering. I totally understand what the fuss is about and if, and if you love them and if you want one, I say go for it. Totally worth every single penny. So grateful we finally got a hold of one and I was able to review it. Massive thank you to my friend there again, Ephraim. If you're listening, it's uh, an absolute honor and a pleasure and it's going to be sad to see it go, but I understand why, why you want to get another one. They are incredible. Anyway, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to give this a like if you enjoyed it and found it useful. It really does help me. So please don't forget to hit that like button. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.